What's up, y'all? How you doing? Uh, another great Wednesday. Um, coming off, all, oh my, my guy back there. Coming off um, another great team win. Uh, but we got got to go on the road Sunday night football against a team that's really hot right now, playing really good football. Has beat three really good teams over the past three weeks. So again, we got to bring our A game, um, build upon our performances of the last couple Sundays, and continue to improve moving forward. So we're excited to get back after it. Another really good team, and go on the road and. Uh, bring back another victory to Minnesota. Quarterbacks normally have OTAs and mini camp and training camp to get on the same page, and learn the receivers, how fast they are, how they run routes. What's allowed you to kind of simulate so fast with your receivers and know how they do things and, and complete passes at a high percentage? Yeah, I think it's um, a big shout out to them uh, finding ways to get extra work with me, whether it's through the communication that we have in passing in the locker room or in the film room or getting extra work reps on the practice field, just finding ways to build in as many game simulated reps as we can. Given that, you know, we haven't had the amount of banked reps that a lot of teams have had up until this point of the season or shoot this part of the football year. So um, I appreciate the t my teammates of, um, you know, even when they're sore and a little bit tired of working with me extra so that we can get those extra reps so that, you know, we can see the benefits of it on Sunday. Run a certain route, how they come out of breaks, how fast they are. Do you know that pretty well? Yeah, you know, I think um, given the situation I've been in, I've had a lot of reps of throwing to guys um, fairly quickly, especially in game situations where you haven't had a ton of time to work with them. Um, and so I think, you know, I'm really good with my communication of how I ask questions of what they're thinking on routes and, and I'm able to get the feedback from them. So that helps, obviously, just the more we can communicate. Um, in these settings, in the locker room, on the practice field, it's only going to help us on game day. Josh, along those lines, your occasional summer workouts with Hawkinson down mm -hmm. in Tennessee, like how much further do you think that got you along in just being connected with him? On yeah, no, it definitely helps. Like obviously when we did those workouts, I think um, – one year he was in Detroit, like at the time, and uh, then it was this past off season as well when he was already in Minnesota. And so obviously I wasn't, you know, his quarterback, so it's not like we planned to be doing that in the game. But it was cool to have those bank reps and those bank communication um, with somebody, right? Like especially one of your best playmakers on offense that you have some reps with him, have a feel for how he gets in and out of routes. Obviously TJ is a matchup issue, and it shows on Sunday, and so. Getting that feel um, as the quarterback, you know, it, it does take a different level when you have a guy that big um, who's able to move the way he does. And so to have those reps has only helped us get onto the same page very quickly. Obviously, we saw the production in the first half. And so, yeah, we want to continue to add on to those improvements. I think I may have missed him on a couple or, or a little bit behind him where I can give him a little better ball location so he can run through and get some more yards after catch. And so we're always finding ways that we can improve so that we can be better on Sundays. Josh, when you're meeting with coaches and you're trying to determine things that you've run in the past and things that work for you, what has that process been like? Who, do you, who are you meeting with and yeah. how many suggestions do you bring of things you've done in the past? You know, it's a feel. Like, obviously, we play different defenses, and each team is kind of built differently for how they attack uh, defenses. So it was a feel with Chris and Grant and KOC of, and shoot, probably the entire offensive staff, you know, as they're game planning different areas of the, of, of the game plan, asking, like, hey, like, do you have comfortable with, are you comfortable with this concept? Have you run this in the past? Or, you know, what concepts do you like on third down or in the red zone? So it was a constant communication throughout the week. Um, so that, you know, when it's installed, I'm comfortable with it. The guys are comfortable with it. They can coach it um, the correct way so that we're all seeing the field the same. We understand the play the same, and that allows us to play quickly on Sundays. Josh, over the course of your time in the NFL, do you feel like it's been hard to, like, show who you really are from an athleticism standpoint in practice where – like the play in is very cool. <laughs> yeah, that for sure. Like obviously as a quarterback you're not getting hit in practice and guys don't have to tackle you in practice. And I think that's a big part of my game of you know, I'm difficult to tackle, difficult to get to the ground, um, in a lot of different scenarios where it's in the pocket, outside the pocket extending plays. So you can't always show that in practice. You know, I've showed it um with the reps and the sample size, like if you watch like any of my film, even like old preseason tape, it shows up on tape uh, constantly. But it is something hard to show in practice. And like at the end of the day, like practice, obviously, you know, you want to simulate as much gameplay as possible. But uh, with my skill set, sometimes that is hard to show up. So I'm just glad it shows up on Sunday. In what areas, from a mechanics throwing standpoint, have you 
have you improved from the time you entered the league to now? And are there specifics in, in certain areas that you have improved? Yeah, you know, I think uh, from a mechanic standpoint, throwing the ball, I've been pretty consistent since entering the league, I would say. Now, I will say um, something that all quarterbacks are constantly trying to do is just refine your feet in the pocket, be calm in the pocket, especially in the midst of chaos. And obviously that comes with reps, right? That comes with feel, that comes with understanding defenses so that you're able to get the ball out quickly when you need to, but also hold and move in the pocket when the right concept presents itself. And so that has uh, progressed over time as any quarterback in the league's natural progression will be. And so that's, that's the constant chase. Like how can I refine my footwork, have simple feet, simple eyes in the pocket so that I'm looking downfield, my eyes are in the right place. When guys come open on time, and when they're not open, I'm able to make plays with my legs. Josh, with the possibility of Justin Jefferson coming back this week, do you recall having a talented offense like you have right now? And uh, what are some of the added benefits to just playing with the tools that you have here in Minnesota? Yeah, I just we definitely have a, a lot of talent on offense. Um, I've been around some talented offenses, but you know, with the guys that we have here rolling, man, it, it's definitely a hard to top the guys in, in this locker room. And that's what's so exciting. Like, uh, what, as I, as we've talked about, guys have been stepping up into roles, and uh, whenever Jet gets back out there, having him out there, we obviously know this, know the impact he has uh, on football games every Sunday. So it'll be good, great to get that back in our offense, man. I'm excited. Like whoever's out there, man, they continue to make plays for me. So that. Uh, makes my job a little bit easier, allows me to have fun out there slinging the ball. So, um, yeah, we got a good group, and I'm excited to keep the thing rolling. Josh, how much have you been able to throw with Justin to this point in practice? Well, with the rules, I haven't spent a lot of time. I know his first week um, back with the team was last week. And so, as I said, we'll get banked reps, especially as, you know, his process and he's getting ramped back up. We'll get those reps needed so that when Sunday comes, man, like when he's back out there, it will be smooth transition and I'll know where he's going to be and I'll get him the football when he's open. I wonder if anything has gone through your mind uh, as you've seen the injuries Cleveland's had at quarterback this year and obviously the Deshaun news came out today that he's out for yeah. the year. And so I was wondering, like, I know you've been to a lot of stops, but like what goes through your mind when you see a place where you, you, know, you might have ascended had you still been there? Yeah, I don't really live in the world of hypotheticals. You know, I kind of just stay right here. Obviously, uh, prayers for Deshaun and his surgery. I wish him a speedy recovery. We're actually just talking – um, on the off day yesterday just about his game in Baltimore and the game here and talking with uh, QA, Quincy, the guy we both work with down in Atlanta and just sharing notes about just the uh, playing quarterback and uh, everything. So I wish him a speedy recovery. Um, but as it, as does my mind like wander to like what ifs, no, you know, um, I have so much on my plate just in preparing for uh, each game, especially this game against a really good defense that I got to stay right here, stay present in it all, man, and um, worry about my situation here and making the most of it. Um, not that I know of. Of course, we didn't, we didn't talk like injuries or anything. So, uh, but yeah, no, that was tough news to hear for sure. Josh, going back to your athleticism, uh, when was the first time you realized you were fast? Uh, um, you know, I like to say like you, like there's a lot of obviously large individuals on the other side of the football and it's painful when they hit you. So it's more of like just running not to have to be hit by those <laughs> by those guys. So yeah, like it's something that's always been part of my game since I started playing football uh, when I was like six years old. So um, it's always been part of my game. And now the key is always finding ways to uh, make sure that that aspect of the game is never lost. Josh, is there any uh, analytics between, you know, you talk about your, your love for NASA and rocket ship, all this. Is there anything you see about the science of, of that and what you apply to football and the way that, you know, your mind works or the way that you see plays develop or the way that you see you got to develop your body that, that has carryover between those two? Uh, you know, they seem abstract, but they, yet they, yeah. you can see where there's some synergy. No, there's definitely some synergy. Um, I always say, like, engineering. Uh, and quarterback have a lot of crossover just in the mental aspect of both, right? Like uh, when you're an engineer in school, you show up day one as a freshman and they just throw a ton of problems at you and you're forced, like you're giving equations and you have to figure it, critically think of how to solve those problems efficiently, repeat process. Football is the same way. You show up, defense presents 
a plethora of difficulties and uh, scenarios and pressures and blitzes and fronts. And they throw all those at you. <clears throat> As a quarterback, you've got to get your team in the right play, critically think of, am I in the right play now or what play do I need to get to attack this defense and repeat process? Obviously, as an engineer, you're not um, given a 40-second clock to do that. <laughs> so things happen a little quicker on the football field. But like that process of having to critically think problem solve, and then repeat process and applying multiple principles across different situations um, does translate between being an engineer and being a quarterback. So it's cool to uh, be able to work that muscle or have, to have been able to work that muscle uh, throughout my college career, off the field, as well as on the field. Josh, with all that background, with all that background uh, is there a reason or you ever wonder why you've been in so many different places? Um, no, like... Um, you know, obviously, like, that could be a thought, but, uh, yeah, I was just focused on my journey. You know, I think, like, as I, as I just think back on my journey, obviously, I was in Pittsburgh for a prolonged period of time. I kind of recognized that uh, I might need to go and search out a different opportunity in order to get on the field. And when I did that, I kind of understood that my journey might be a little unique. Like, for example, last year being in Cleveland for all 12 weeks, and then Deshaun came back and uh, was re released to – to a logistic situation on the roster and not due to talent. I was like, hey, like if I want to play this year, like I need to go somewhere else. So teams are aware that I'm searching for an opportunity to play at the end of the season. And that ultimately got the opportunity to go to Tennessee at the end of the season, start those two last two games there. Then going back to Cleveland, Cleveland placed me in an opportunity to have a bigger role of going and being a day one starter in Arizona, which thus has landed me here at this stage of the season. So um, each stop, each, oppor each opportunity, my role has grown, my opportunity to get on the field, contribute, and shoot being a starting quarterback in the National Football League has continued to grow. And so, um, yeah, I recognized that about a year ago around this time, and I kind of accepted that that was going to be my journey, man. And um, whatever opportunities thrown my way, no matter how big or small, I was going to make the most of them. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Appreciate y'all.